Virgin Galactic. Let's talk about Virgin Galactic. I'm making this video during a live show. I'm going to give you my price prediction, short term, long term. I'm going to give you the chance to win at $204 in cash. I'm also going to talk about the last flight. We're also going to talk about the Virgin Galactic t-shirts and the emotion around the stock right now. And we're also going to talk about um, the current uh, stock, uh, the current uh, um, markets and where we're going and why Virgin Galactic is going down and where we see it going to. So as you can see, Virgin Galactic is going down. Now, I took a lot of flack recently uh, about 500 videos ago. I do make a lot of videos on Virgin Galactic because there's lots of information coming out all the time. I said Virgin Galactic could go to 150. Most people hated that. Um, I It was my most unpopular video. Lots of people commented and said I was an idiot. Lots of people unsubscribed. Since then, they've resubscribed, recome back and watched and joined us for the last flight. You need to understand why I say it can go to 150 and why I've said my price target is now three. So let's talk about it. I will reply to all of my members' comments. If I've got time after that, I will reply to all uh, to everybody else. So leave me your thoughts below, and uh, let's have a let's have a conversation about Virgin Galactic and where we see it going today. Now, first of all, we need to understand this stock is no longer a stock that I am trading. You can't trade this stock right now. And what I mean by that is. When the stock pops up, you can take some profits, you can trim off the top, you can buy it back lower. Right now, we've entered a whole different realm. This is a bit like Mullen right now. Someone said to me this morning, oh my gosh, Virgin Galactic is like Mullen, the worst stock on the stock market. Well, it's not quite there, but it's getting there. Now, if you've been in Mullen, you will know it just keeps going down and down and down. And then what they do then is keep reverse splitting to keep the stock up on the index, and then it goes down again. Then they do a reverse reverse split again. That is a scam stock. I am not suggesting for a moment that Virgin Galactic is a scam stock at all. Not at all. And let's, you know, let, let, let's, let's get that completely straight. It's not a scam stock. However, it is very, very, very weak right now. Now, when I said it could go to $1.50, I sold my position at whatever it was, 475. You remember when it popped up on the flight and I took a 17% profit and people said I was an idiot for doing that. I said, well, I'm making a profit. It's going to go lower. And they went, no, it's not. It's all going to be great. And I went, it's going to go lower. And they said to me, you used to say it was going to go a hundred bucks. Yes, I did. Stand by that. It can trade to a hundred bucks. I said that before the flights happened. Situation changed. Markets continue to uh, continue to go, to go down on, on Virgin Galactic after each flight. Interest rates are threatened to go up again. Uh, and that's really, really bad for Virgin Galactic. Of course, any company that borrows money, that's really bad. That's pre-profit is really bad when the rates go up. And the chance of the rates going up now has increased again. This is not good news for Virgin Galactic. So you have to, you have to consistently... Uh, con sorry, continually reassess the stock. The markets do change every day. The situation changes every day. So I originally entered Virgin Galactic for a long-term position. Then I moved into a trading position where you can buy the pops, trim off the top, lower the averages and so on. Now I've moved into a long-term position, not a trading position. Now, what I mean by that is I have my long-term position here in my brokerage and I have three uh, 1,165 shares out of a potential of 5,000. I want 5,000 shares. 5,000 shares isn't a magic number I've plucked out of the sky. It's a number I want looking at my the balance of my portfolio, what I can afford to risk, in the short term, in the medium term, and the long term to reach my goals. It's not just a magic number. I want to achieve 100 grand this year and 200 grand by next year. That's it. After that, 
I have achieved what I want for my future earnings. Then it all moves into dividend stocks and safe stocks and so on. I won Virgin Galactic because I'm now looking at it as a, at a, as a long-term position. And the reason for this is several, several things. On the last earnings and on the last flight, we learned things that we couldn't know in previous flights, previous videos. Things change. Information updates. The markets change. The markets are all down. And I have said repeatedly, as I study this stock every day, I speak to people on the ground at Virgin Galactic. I, I know people within all the shares and companies that I own. I have, I have said now that this is a long-term investment. And on the last earnings and the last flight, we learned two extra things. First of all, we learned exactly how many of the shares have now been diluted. We also learned of what's left to do. And because they'd done some more shares than I first anticipated, I felt that, okay, 150 isn't a bottom now. Not only that, because they have the memberships, which I wasn't accounting for. I knew about the ticket prices and so on, but the memberships was an extra revenue stream. But also, I like the fact that they can bump up the seats for the um, invest for the research seats, which are six hundred grand, I believe, compared to four fifty, which is more. And uh, they have people to fill those seats, and they can do that if there's a cancellation or something changes, whatever. I like that because that provides extra income going forward. Um. Also, what I really like for the first time, for the first time, Virgin Galactic got something right when it comes to the marketing. The video that went out afterwards, which I put on my um, video, which I'll give you a link to in a minute. If you all get involved, you can all actually help this. Start is it, getting a lot of a lot of views, a lot of attention. And we heard what it felt like for the first time and how much they enjoyed it. The general public, the general f folks, the three of those people really enjoyed the, the experience as a life-changing experience. Now, I think that was really good. Now, on, and this is important, on Virgin Galactic's YouTube channel, on my channel, and on NASA's channel, the NASA... Uh, streaming, not NASA official, but a NASA streaming channel. Everyone's views on the flight were dramatically down. It wasn't just me, so it wasn't because no one liked my content. Everyone lost viewers dramatically down because this, this flight did not get the attention on the searchable YouTube channels that it did before. And that makes sense. We said it wouldn't. It's a second flight wasn't celebrity, no one cares. And we said that. That was a mistake. Virgin Galactic made, made a big mistake. However, that's what they did. They made the same mistakes as Virgin Orbit. They're not very good at marketing. And we're going to come on to some, another, an, an, an example in a moment. So, you know, that happened. Now, it did, however, get good coverage on the TV. TV picked up on it. They don't care about people searching for Virgin Galactic. They put it out on the TV, BBC, Sky in the UK, all over the US, all around the world, people were excited about it. However, that was hopefully supposed to then promote the stock in a way where investors would go, this is good. This is good. I like this. It looks good. However, the company... And the institutions are not buying it yet because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense because we know there's dilution still left to go. Now, if I'm an institution and I've got you know, billions of dollars or whatever, I'm not going to buy Virgin Galactic yet because I know it's going lower. Now, I've said that the bottom is three. I used to say 150. We even said 250 uh, from a chart perspective last yesterday with, with Sensei Crypto. We talked about that. But I said that three is potentially the bottom here. Now, we're very close to that now. We're at 301. 
This is if it goes below three, it will definitely go to 250 because psychologically people will just feel it's now entered an all time low, a new area. And um, institutions don't look at it like that, but retail investors will give up. Now, no retail investor that owns this now is making any money. Anyone selling now is losing money. No question about it. That would be, in my opinion, a bad thing to do. When I sold it at 35, at 15, after the flight at 4.55, wherever it was, that was different. Selling it now, you, you are selling for a loss and there's nothing wrong with selling for a loss at all. I've done it plenty of times and I've bought it back lower. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Nothing wrong with doing that if you know it's going to go lower. But the reality is this business is either going to go bust zero like Virgin Orbit and that is a real potential or we are about around the bottom. Now, at some point, and if you're looking on level two data, you ain't going to get it. If you're looking at level three data, you ain't going to get it. Uh, does everyone know what I mean by that? If you go on uh, the different levels, you can, look at, um, you can look at the buying orders and so on and so forth. This is all manipulated. This is not going to tell you. Big institutions know what level they're going to buy it. If it hits that level, it's going to fly up. The point is, if you sell at this point, you've either got to be in now for the long term or you're out because you think it's going to go bankrupt. And that's nothing wrong with that. If you're selling out to buy back lower, that's a mistake because at any point, institutions could jump on in and in one second, it's five bucks. Then they, then they dilute to four bucks. That's it. That, that can happen. So there's no point selling now unless you think it's going to go bankrupt and that's fair enough you could you could you could assume that and there's evidence to suggest that is a, that's a potential path or what I'm going to do is buy more on my Roth position not my brokerage position because my brokerage position if I sell I have to pay tax on Buy more on my Roth position, which is what I did yesterday. Add some more money, buy it there. And then when it pops up, I can then sell um, and take some profit and then add some more money to my uh, main brokerage position. So I'm lowering the averages on my separate account. So I'm going to make some money to compensate for what I'm losing over here so I can afford it to go down. Um so bear that in mind. If you are selling now, everyone is selling for a loss. No one. The only people, and this is the unknown quantity, the only people who can sell this now for uh, a profit uh, are founder investors. Now, we don't know what they paid for it. That would be inside information. I've no idea what they paid for it. Maybe they paid a dollar for a share. I don't know. I don't know. But I still believe we are either at the, around about the bottom and when institutions buy in, it's going to pop up or it's going bust. Now, if it's going bust, and that's why I'm not buying any more right now, if it's going bust, how does it affect your portfolio? For me, I'm fine with it. I don't want to lose three and a half grand, which is what my shares are worth right now. But I don't think... Looking at the reaction, looking at the, the likelihood that we have reached the top of the rate hikes, that we are going to see the rate hikes pause. I think the market, I think the Fed have to give a pause on the next FOMC report, which is in February. Sorry, which is in September. The markets need some stability now. We've gone far enough. Maybe we've gone too far. The Fed can pause at any point. When that happens, speculative stocks, stocks that borrow money, now have a path. 
They know the rates are being paused. They know it's not going to get any worse. They know they can build from here. So if you believe that Virgin Galactic is something for the future, you hold. If you think it's going to go bust, sell it. Simple. Now, Virgin Galactic, in my opinion, is still making some mistakes. We had a couple of comments come in earlier. Um, Pete Barker said this, space is now a falling knife. Don't try to catch it until it drops below 250. Dollar cost averaging is something I think somebody made up on YouTube. Mr. Lynch of Merrill Lynch, Peter Lynch talked about this. People always think that, you know, dollar cost averaging is a good thing. Dollar cost averaging is not a good thing. It can be a good thing. If you're buying a value of a stock that is still fundamentally the same, but it's cheaper, you're buying the company, not the stock price. It's on sale. Fair enough. But if a, if a company is failing and you keep buying the dip, that dip can run forever. Remember, if a stock is down 50% today, it can go down 50% tomorrow, 50% the next day. Don't think 250s make 100. 50% every single day for the next year until the, until the stock is delisted. It can go on forever. So don't think, well, it's down 50%. It's going to be, that's, the, that's it. No, it can go down 50% every single day for the next five years. Of course, it wouldn't happen because the stock would be delisted. They'd have to reverse split and so on and so forth. So, but, you know, that's, that's the first thing. Max H sent this comment in. I've been shorting Virgin. Now, we've got someone here who is shorting the stock. As you know, I never short stocks. Couldn't care less about that. I've got, you know, I, I, I love people when they short stocks because I will make money from them. I am, Max H is not aware of this, but I am making money from Max H. Max H is going, hey, hang on a minute. What do you mean? How are you making money out of me? I'm making money out of Max H. How do you think I'm making money out of Max H? I'm making money out of Max H because where do you think the stocks come from that people contract to short? They come from people like me who stock lend their stocks. I'm earning 1% of what Max is doing by lending out my stocks. It's a feature on Robinhood, as it is other brokerages. You can lend out your, you can lend out your stocks and earn 1%. Some people say, is that wrong that you're doing that? You're shorting your own stocks. No, I'm not. I am acting like a bank. A bank will lend you money to go out and buy cigarettes, which will give you cancer. Are they responsible for giving you cancer? Should they think, oh, we shouldn't lend any money out because everyone's borrowing money to buy cigarettes? No. You want to buy cigarettes? Up to you. You're going to pay us an interest to borrow our money. Well, Max H can do whatever he likes with those stocks. He's borrowing them from people like me, paying me 1%. He doesn't know it, but he is. <laughs> and uh, I make money out of it. Now, shorters, statistically, always win the battles, but always lose the wars on a stock that you believe fundamentally is going up. If you have patience, a short squeeze will come. If you don't know what a short squeeze, think of it as like a, like a, uh, like a, 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 like a champagne bottle. It gets forced. It, suddenly everyone who's short in the stock is forced to make a decision and everyone comes together and it explodes and pops up like a champagne bottle and suddenly the stock goes crazy and then everyone starts buying it in because they think this, the stock's going up. FOMO kicks in. Institutions start jumping in. The shorters have to buy because it's going up. Otherwise, they get, they, they get liquidated and so on and so forth. That's great if a stock is ultimately going up. If it's rubbish and going down, then, you know, shorters can drive it down to zero. That's the decision you have to make. Now, he also mentioned this point. Uh, Virgin Galactic is busy promoting t-shirts on, uh, on their story. This is what uh, I wanted to share with you on the screen about marketing. Um, Virgin Galactic, I just want to defend them a little bit here. Yes, it is true. On, on Twitter today, and has been for a while, Virgin Galactic are putting out a, a load of t-shirts and so on and so forth. Uh, Virgin Galactic aren't the best at marketing. No, I don't think 
I don't, as an investor, I don't feel that excited about the way Virgin Galactic have gone about it. They're a bit like Virgin Orbit. They've got a very small marketing team. I have offered to be involved. They've not replied to me. They are doing it their own way. I don't think they're making the best decisions. The t-shirt thing is not a big deal. Let's be perfectly honest. It's not a it's not a deal breaker as far as I'm concerned. Virgin Galactic are giving away some t-shirts, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, we have heard from, you know, the successful flights. You know, we've got to grow up a little bit now. You know, investors who invest in this aren't going to buy it because they do or don't do T-shirts, all right? Um, the reality is Virgin Galactic's big mistake, big mistake is not bumping up the the, the, the celebrity tickets on the last flight. That was a big mistake. They decided, and I'll, and I'll explain why, they decided to go with um, the, 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 the ticket winners, uh, the, 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 you know, the ones that won the tickets, and John. Um, because if you look at Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson, he's very much about doing nice things, good things. He's a decent bloke. He's a good businessman as well, but... Primarily, I think Virgin Galactic was done for him to get into space and he loves the idea. He makes a lot of mistakes. Virgin Orbit was a mistake. Um, the, the previous Virgin uh, businesses were mistakes. They all went bankrupt. We know what happened to Virgin Cola. That went down the toilet. A lot of things that Richard Branson has done has been successful and a lot of been, things have been unsuccessful. One of those is uh, marketing. He used to be the king of marketing, no question about it. Richard Branson, when he did his thing with the with the with the tank, which ultimately ended up bad in Times Square with Coca Cola and all the rest of it crushing all the cans, you know, great marketing, but it backfired on him because Coca Cola just stamped on him and destroyed him. Uh, right now, what Virgin Galactic need to do is the fact they need to get celebrities in the air to draw attention. Now, I just want to be absolutely clear: if they do that and achieve that, it's not going to uh, make the stock price dramatically go up. What it could do is create a short squeeze, which could pump it initially, then people get a bit of FOMO, then start feeling it's time to get in, but then there'll be people who trim off when it goes up to four or five bucks and it will go back down again. What we really need to do and this is where you have to decide are you a long-term investor or a trader. Now, I've traded this. I'm done. I'm done. Pretty much done trading it. I can trade it on my Roth, but my main account, I'm just holding it. You have to decide: Are you an investor? Do you see Virgin Galactic as a technology for the future, not just as a space tourism company, but as a technology for the future, or do you not? And if you don't, you have to say: Is it going to go bankrupt? If it's going to go bankrupt, take your loss, get out of it. But remember, if you're selling it now for a loss, you, you don't want to buy it back until it gets to 250 or even two. You don't want to buy it back at 398. That would be ridiculous. You got to buy it back at 250. I think we're at bottom with what we've now learned. And if that changes, it changes. But if you do buy it back now, if you do sell it now, you've got to wait and ask yourself. If it goes to 250, sorry, uh, 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 251, and you're just about to pull the pin and buy back in, and suddenly, boom, institutions buy it and it's five bucks, how are you going to feel? Now, that's FOMO. That's not a reason to invest, but work it out on the balance sheet. Work it out. Do you believe in this? Anyway, I said if you watch to the end of the video, and thank you for watching all the way through this Virgin Galactic um sort of semi-deep dive. Click above my head for all the Virgin Galactic uh, playlists. Also, click above my head uh, and you will see uh, the links for uh, Twitter 
and we'll, we'll run a poll on there today and see if uh, you think that the stock is going to go up, down or sideways. Are you in or you're out? I'll ask you a question. If you're watching me during a live show, guys, there's no, there's no link there yet, right? I'm making this in a live video. Click above my head if you want to enter our free $204 cash giveaway. You can also sponsor it and I can get everyone to click on your website or your YouTube channel or your Twitter or whatever it might be. So go and check that out and you can uh, see all of that as well. All right. So you can win some money and all the rest of it. And uh, now then, I'm going to ask uh, one final thing. If you've watched to the end of this video, and I've kept it here for a reason, uh, you need to leave a comment. And the comment is, Go Virgin Galactic. Go Virgin Galactic. G-O Virgin Galactic. Go Virgin Galactic. If you leave that in the comments below this video, and you've watched it all the way through and liked it, you will earn extra tickets in our competition when I post this later. During the live show, it's not there. I will create that ticket entry later. If you click over here for more videos, uh, how to enter the $204 uh, cash giveaway and more Virgin Galactic videos down here. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves, take care of your money, your crypto, but most importantly, take care of each other. Bye-bye for now.